Well, as you can see from your picture, it's a miserable day at St. Logan's Park in Wollongar. For this Leinster Club hurling champion beating of St. Anne's, uh, flying the flag for Wexford and the Westmeath County champions, Lochleen Gales. Firstly, a uh, look here at the Lochleen Gales selection, and Christy Murta plays at centre half back. Matt Shaw and Paul Williams are selected at midfield. Gary Bryady plays at right full forward, and it's full forward line that also includes John Kennedy and David Cunningham. Referee for this afternoon's game is John Guinan of Kilkenny. And now St. Dan's goalkeeper today is Portic Parley. Dara Ryan is selected at centre half back and a half back line that also includes Kevin Byrne and Paul French. Jack Berry leads the attack. Um, the St. Dan's team today are captained by their full forward, Dermot Berry. Game underway and it's St. Dan's playing in the Dublin colours. Jack Berry with his early opportunity flying it in towards the goal. Mick uh, Riley brings it down in goal for Lockley and Gales. And the play out here towards uh, Brilliant Williams. Challenged by Richie Doyle. And Lachlan Gales having a spot of bother here, trying to clear it as the ball has been uh, thumped inside. Support outside with Redmond Barry. Barry for St. Anne, sending this one towards the, the end line. Well brought down. And that's a very good clearance indeed by Martin Williams, the right fullback, albeit at the expense of a line ball. Hands carrying the ball through towards the attacking 20 metre line. And it's Lachlan Gale smartly clearing this one away from their own full back line. That's a big clearance. Play drops around the middle, and Joey Williams is onto it. And Williams is away. This is a lightning pace by Joey Williams. Needing support, uh, John Gavigan is outside if he can spot him. Here comes the centre half forward. Gavigan with this early scoring opportunity sends it in, and it's over the crossbar as well. The opening point, and it falls for Lockley and Gales. The point to their centre half forward. Dan's trying to come back at level terms, but this time it's away. The clearance by Christy Murta, the centre half back. Well brought down at centre field by St. Anne's. Long hand pass inside, perhaps too long. As Gales read the situation well and drop it invitingly towards their full forward line. Uh, maybe a scoring chance here and a possibility of a second point. But for that uh, fine block down by Donald Berry. It's Jeff Berry trying to clear it. Right full back, and somehow he's lost it. And there is an opportunity here for the Gales. This one is going to be short in around the edge of the square. The ball is broken loose, and luckily, St. Anderson's defender back there to sweep it out over this near sideline. Here comes the sideline cut, chipped in towards the uh, 13 metre line. St. Anne's with their powerful full-back, Donald Burry getting it away. He brings play a little bit beyond halfway. Christy Murta has brought it down. Onto his left side, didn't connect as well as he would have liked. That was well kept in initially, at least, by Joey Williams. And it's uh, Lockley and Gales that are clearing it at that far sideline towards the attacking 65 of the ball. Well, very swiftly has been transferred inside, and there is a free a foul on David Cunningham. Left full forward for Lockley and Gales. Harley issuing the instructions there on his goal line. Here comes the scoring chance, and that's popped over the crossbar as well. Point by John Kennedy, and so Lockley and Gales of Westmeath have a two-point lead in this game. Oh, that's great fielding. Great fielding indeed by Jack Berry. Jack Berry on his left side. That's a powerful strike inside. There's a goal-scoring chance, and it's stopped, and it's over the goal line. The goal has been given. Well, this will be interesting to see once again a goal for St. Anne's of Wexford. I think we'll have to credit uh, Richie Doyle with the goal. This is Dermot Berry going forward onto the boot. Goalkeeper did well to parry it, but only into the path of Richie Doyle, who managed to just about shovel the slither over the goal line. It's a goal now for St. Anne's, two points for Lockley and Gales. It's Redmond Barry to take this free. He's dropping it in towards the goal. Oh, and it's come off the upright. And luckily for uh, Lockley and Gales, Matt Kennedy happened to be in the right place at the right time. The support outside. The attempted clearance has been blocked down, and there is a free. A free and a scoring opportunity for uh, St. Dan's. That's Redmond Barry. And by floating this one in, and he's put it between the uprights as well. A neat point by Redmond Barry to leave it one goal and one now to two points. 
St. Anne's uh, once again with Redmond Barry uh, tossing this one forward along the ground. Matt Kennedy standing firm, at least he was. Uh, St. Anne's float this one in towards the path of Francis Simpson. Lachlan Gales over the clearance. That's a very effective one as well. Brings play almost towards the middle of the pitch. John Simpson and Rory Stafford are the midfielders today uh, for St. Anne's. As we watch uh, David Cunningham advance forward now uh, for Lachlan Gales. Tidy ball inside. There's a great scoring opportunity here, but it's gone to the left and wide. Well, Lachlan Gales had a chance there for their third point. They failed to find the target. Lachlan Gales are coming once again. There's a goal scoring chance here, and it is brilliantly blocked by Portic Parley on the goal line. And his clearance is effective as well as it comes here to the right full back position. Well, Lachlan Gales still trying to threaten the goal. David Cunningham firing it straight across. Well brought down by St. Anne's. And it's the Wexford champions that have possession. John Gavigan trying to bring it down. Still Lachlan Gales, this is a threatening one inside. It may fall kindly, and it does into the back of the net. A goal for Lachlan Gales. And it's their right full forward, Gary Bridey, that has scored it. And here we see it once again. He brought it down well, and just uh, dribbled the ball in front of him, and then fired it past uh, Portic Parley in the goal. So Dan's now at the other end, and that's uh, Francis Simpson having the shot now to Richie Doyle. He's fouled. That's a penalty. A penalty, says the Kilkenny referee, John Guinan. Three players on the goal line for Lockley and Gales. Here comes the opportunity, and it's blocked. That's well saved, and it's chipped across the face of the goal. But great goalkeeping by that uh, defence for Lockley and Gales. It's the Westmeath representatives that bring play down this near sideline. St. Anzo quickly onto it, transferring it towards their inside forward line. That full back line are doing well, none more so than Matt Kennedy. His shot has been blocked on this occasion. That's Richie Dial sending it down their level. Their level here in Mullingar, one goal and two points apiece. A point for the stick of Richie Dial, the left half forward. Dan's advancing forward, midfielder Rory Stafford. Stafford managing to direct this one in towards the goal, and it may fall, and indeed it does to Francis Simpson. He shot goal. A goal for St. Dan's, and the goal scorer, uh, Francis Simpson. Here we see it again. What a great pass inside, though. Francis Simpson then, well, he was already motoring forward before the slither even arrived. Managed under considerable pressure to get in his shot, and that was a cracking effort. Give St. Anne's now a lead of two points. Redmond Barry. He's the goal scorer. Francis Simpson onto his left side, sending it in towards the goal. Well, he's certainly playing well right now. A goal and a point for him within, well, a very short space of time to leave it two goals and three to one goal and three. St. Dan's now putting on all the pressure in the closing part of this opening half as they drop it. Uh, towards their full forward line. Simpson once again uh, in towards the goal. Well, this is unbelievable. Francis Simpson is really playing well at the moment. Yes, and there's a great uh, stride out by the left full forward to take up his position now. Very close to half time. Lachlan Gales were looking for a score before the half time whistle. David Cunningham playing the ball inside. The whistle has sounded. So this is going to be a free. And the full forward is John Kennedy. Kennedy sending it in towards the goal, and he has put it over. He has managed to put it over the crossbar as well. It's an important score for Lockley and Gales just before half time. Now St. Anne's, and this time it's uh, Richie Doyle that's uh, trying to win it. Swept away by Lockley and Gales is the brink play only though as far as. Um, David O'Connor, there is support outside, that's Redmond Barry. Barry sending it in towards the goal, but that's gone away to the left. And wide, so possession is back with the Lachlan Gales. So Dan sending this one towards uh, Diemer Burry, uh, the full forward and team captain of the St. Anne's team. He's also brother of the full back, uh, Donald Burry, and both are sons of the former Leinster Council chairman, uh, Jim Burry. Referee sounds for half time and it's St. Anne's that lead by 
Two goals and five points to one goal and four points now for Lockley and Gales. So a little separating the teams, I can tell you. And if uh, St. Anne's were to suffer defeat here, it would represent uh, a fairly big surprise in this Leinster Club Hurling Championship. David O'Connor has won himself to free in a scoreable position. That's Mark Bridie on the goal line. Here comes the free taker, of course, Redmond Barry. Sending it in, and it is over the crossbar. So two goals and six points now St. Anne's have scored in this match. And they have increased their half-time lead now to five points. Rory Stafford. This is Stafford going forward on the right wing. Clever ball outside, trying to involve Richie Dyle. He scored a tremendous point in the opening half. Now he's looking for another. That's a fine point indeed. That's one of the best points we've seen. Coming through Richie Doyle. Redmond Barry. Daniel Carthy is also close by. St. Anne's and Rory Staff with their midfielder advancing. Give a glance over, thought he'd won himself the free. He hadn't. He has recovered to play it inside towards Dermot Barry. Now Matt Kennedy. There as well as Francis Simpson, one of the, the goal scorers for St. Anne's in the opening half. Swept away, but Richie Doyle is on to smartly for St. Anne's. And the whistle has sounded. There is a free. And a live opportunity now for Redmond Barry to bring his team's uh, score onto two goals and eight points, which he does as he successfully converts this one. It's double scores now at St. Lomans Park in Mullingar. Lachlan Gales, well, their challenge has weakened somewhat in the, the second half. Dara Ryan, his shot has been smothered as the Gales try to recover. And they're still holding on to it. That's David Cunningham's long pass outside, but eventually it's back to St. Anne's, and that's Redmond Barry. Barry long ball down towards uh, Dermot Barry. No free, a little bit of holding, I thought, on the part of Martin Williams, the right full back. This is Kieran Williams. Long, uh, loopy strike downfield. John Gavigan, he's beaten to. That's he. Sends this one downfield. St. Anne's are trying to play it loose. Darrell Ryan had support outside. The Gales are desperately in need of a score right now. They're still holding on to possession. They're managing to send this one through. Intercepted though by Paul French. Redmond Barry. Swept away from him by uh, Joey Williams, it is. Jack Barry is also there. As indeed is Jeff Barry, the right full back. But eventually, Lockley and Gales managed to send this one in towards the, the 20 meter line. And St. Anne's uh, poor clearance on this occasion. There's a scoring chance and it's put over the crossbar. Well, that's a score that uh, Lockley and Gales uh, badly needed. They break inside for Daniel Carthy. And Lockley and Gales could do it a goal right now. Charlie White, the clearance for St. Anne's. It only finds the midfielder for the Gales, and that's Paul Williams. And Williams puts it over to leave it two goals and nine points now to one goal and six. Six points to march between them. Still the Gales advancing forward. They're getting to play a little bit better right now. There's another scoring chance and that's straight over the black spot as well. So they've relied on Paul Williams quite an amount in this second half for the few scores that they have gained. Lockley and Gales that is. It's the sideline cut, and that's the full-time whistle. It's all over, and it has finished with a win for St. Dan's. Two goals and nine points to one goal and seven. Well, it's there we're taking a short break, but do stay with us. We have some very enjoyable games to play.